Good morning. We are Team Hero, and we are here to change the definition of what it means to be a hero. We're adding to the definition. It's not all about being buff and strong like our very own vitamin Casey over here. <laughs> it's also about eating healthy and making the right choices. With that said, I'd like you guys to meet little Johnny. Little Johnny is a five-year-old patient who comes to you for his well exam. He weighs 70 pounds, is three feet three inches tall, and has a BMI of 32. You start to ask him about how's school going, how's his grades, is he getting all A's and B's? Of course he is. And then you ask him about his diet. So little Johnny, are you eating all your fruits and vegetables? And you see that little nod. So you ask him, so what are you eating then? And he says, McDonald's. And then you ask him, so are you at least getting your exercise every day? You're exercising 30 minutes every day, right? And he says, well, mommy, mommy, show her that video. So his mom pulls out her iPhone to show you this. <laughs> this is our sad reality. Over the last 30 years, the rate of childhood obesity in children has doubled, and the rate of adolescent obesity has quadrupled. Today, one in every three children and adolescents are said to be overweight or obese. And Southern California is it's not excluded in Southern California. Um, it's happening in our own backyard. So our target population um, it shows in SPA3 that 20% of students in grades 3, 5, and 7 are obese. And just like all of us know, obesity um, lends to um, a lot of multiple conditions out there, gallbladder disease, hyperlipidemia, and hypertension, just to name a few. So this trend shows third, fifth, and seventh graders. So there's something already happening, there's already something established. So we really wanted to get a, ahead of the curve, ahead of the trend, and really impact change in a group before they got to this point. So this brings us to our problem statement. We really wanted to raise nutritional awareness in first graders because there is a rise in childhood obesity. And um, there was a study done um, in which they surveyed overweight teens and it showed um, what factors affected groups in, in what they decided to eat for food. And there were three things that they said. Number one is it's basically just what they learned in the classroom. Uh, number two is their environment and their access to food in the environment. And number three, it was price. So we really wanted to cater to the classroom education. We, we really wanted to come up with something that could affect change in the classroom. So the question became, how are we going to do this? Um, technology is being used in schools more and more each day. Um, by the end of 2000, almost 100% of the schools had Wi-Fi. So as the years go on, more, and more schools are utilizing technology to teach students. So what we wanted to do is use technology and come up with an instructional program to, to help teach these kids. And like all of us know, instructional programs are so important. We're in a, a program right now, so we build a foundation um, to go and use later to enrich lives, to save lives. Um, there was a study done by Baylor College of Medicine and uh, National Space um, Biomedical Research Group, and they wanted to see how third to seventh graders in Houston, Texas, really understood diet and exercise. And so they catered a program to them because they did, although they did notice that most of them knew about basic exercise and food, a lot of them did not really understand the stuff about healthy portion sizes and about how body size related to basal metabolic rates. So they came up with a program called Food and Fitness, and they did a, a pretest, pre and then after, when the program was done, they really noticed a significant rise in you know, their education in relation to these topics. So what we wanted to do was marry these two topics of instructional programs and, and technology, and that's how we came up with the iBook. So now for the fun part, our intervention. What we did was develop an interactive <coughs> iBook. Our iBook had five chapters, each chapter focusing on one of the five major food groups. So I want to start by um, just showing our interject introduction. It features none other than our A Healthy Hero Vitamin Casey. Here's the video. Hero iBook or healthy eating rules. <laughs> Carrots can help you see better, and spinach can make you stronger. Well, this iBook will help you learn all about healthy eating. So what is healthy eating? Number one, balance. Eating the right amount of all five food groups. Number two, choices. Knowing what you should and should not be eating. And number three, 
habits, using what you know to create good behaviors. So come and take this journey with me and find out how to be a healthy eating hero just like me. <laughs> That was actually the first thing that played on our iBook when the students opened it. Um, we were working with first graders, and as everybody knows, first graders don't have the longest of attention spans. So we asked ourselves, what do kids enjoy? And our answer was a superhero. Um, so that's how we came up with Vitamin Casey. Um, and we used him as kind of a theme throughout our entire iBook to incorporate health literacy into our project. He helped get the kids engaged, excited, and helped them learn about healthy eating in a fun way. So looking closer at our chapters, we really wanted to make sure that we were consistent throughout our book. So what we used was the California Health Education Curriculum to guide our mini lesson plans. Um, so taking a look at our one chapter, we, um, our first lesson was that we wanted our kids to be able to identify the, food, the foods within each food group. So it was interactive in that as you clicked on the question marks, the name of the food item appeared. So another way we incorporated um, health literacy into our project was teaching kind of the confusing idea of serving sizes, which can be difficult to teach to even adults, um, using ounces, grams, pounds, that's confusing for anybody. So we decided to use um, something that the students could refer back to always and they wouldn't be confused by and they have around them all the time, their hands. So we used, <laughs> we used hands um, and fists to help teach them the, the concept of serving sizes. And finally, this is our take-home lesson. We wanted our kids to be able to differentiate, differentiate between healthy versus unhealthy foods. And we taught this based on the traffic by concept. So what it is, is we divide our foods into three different groups. There's the whoa group, stop, this is unhealthy, don't eat these foods. There's the slow group, which is, all right, think about it, you can have these occasionally, but you probably shouldn't be eating them every day. And then there's the go group, which are apples, bananas, are healthy, healthy foods, eat it all day, and incorporate it into your diet. Uh, this part was also interactive in that as you click on the voice icons, Jasmine's beautiful voice um, replays the foods in both English and Spanish. So take a listen. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So this is part of our cultural competency portion of our project. Um, we all live in Los Angeles and we know this is a very diverse um, area with many different cultures. And so we wanted to be inclusive and many of the cultures speak Spanish as their primary language. So that is the second language that we included in our iBook by recording um, in both English and Spanish. So these are first graders and in our book we were presenting a lot of information and we really wanted to make sure that you know the kids were grasping what we were relaying. So at the end of each chapter, we had a teach back where the kids would answer two questions just to see kind of if they're engaging um, the material presented to them. So we have this really cool iBook that we had worked really hard on, but we needed some place to implement it and a group to use it on. Um, so as it turns out, Jasmine's son is a first grade student at Emperor, Emperor Elementary School in the San Gabriel, excuse me, San Gabriel Valley. Um, so we used our advocacy skills, and Jasmine reached out to the first grade teacher um, in her son's class, Ms. Tran. And there were some hoops to jump through as far as getting the project approved, um, but it was finally approved by the principal, who you see right there. Um, and uh, and um, we ended up partnering with our community and presenting it to the first grade, the first grade class. Um, and if, as far as like a lesson in advocacy goes, um, some, sometimes it can be daunting, um, but if you're persistent and use your connections that you already have and are passionate about what you're kind of pushing, they're more likely to want to partner with you. And then next is a snippet of our time in the classroom. We had an hour to teach the students about healthy eating. Um, so this is a little bit of our time in the class. So what did our empirical evidence show? Was our intervention successful? The short answer, yes. <laughs> but let's dive deeper into the numbers. So objective number one, a first grade student was able to correctly identify at least three out of the five food groups, fruits, veggies, proteins, dairies, and grains. And what we found actually was interesting, unexpected actually, was that after our pretest, 100% of the kids were able to do, meet this objective. 
So we were dealing with some smart kids. After our intervention and our post-test results showed, though, that 85% of the students were able to correctly identify all five out of the five food groups. So that was great. Objective number two, a first grade student was able to correctly identify at least one out of the five, or at least one specific food within each food group. And what we, what we actually found after our intervention, our post-test uh, showed that there was a 20% increase in the number of kids who were able to uh, meet this objective within the the grains food group, there was a 35% increase in the number of kids who were able to correctly identify one specific food within the dairy food group, and a whopping 50% increase within the protein food group. So objective number three, uh, first, this was actually two-pronged, there, there were two parts. The first part was a first grade student was able to correctly identify a healthy versus a non-healthy food. And the second part of that was a first grade student was able to correctly identify the proper portion size. So what we found was there was actually no change in the student's ability to meet the first part of the objective. But when it came to portion size, there was a 50% increase in the number of kids who were able to correctly identify the portion size. Okay, so now that we've talked about what the kids have learned, let's talk about what we've learned. First, we think we should have probably consulted with Ms. Tran a little bit more, and um, just so that we had a better understanding of what level the students were at. In addition to that, um, with our pre and post test, we probably could have had some improvement in the structuring of the questions. Our questions would say, you know, circle all that apply, when it should have said circle one, because it made it a little more difficult to analyze. And in addition to that, we probably should have had more consistency with the pictures in the iBook versus the pictures in the pre and the post test. I mean, even we had some difficulty like distinguishing between the eggs and the chicken and nuggets. Um, but overall, like I think we still think that we did an excellent job just based on our interactions with the students. Um, but just because of our flaws in our in our pre and post testing, it just didn't mirror it completely. Because if you were to ask me, I thought my kids got 100, <laughs> percent and it wasn't so much. <laughs> So, um, survey says 90% of our audience actually enjoyed using our iBook. Um, and even before the time was over, one of the kids was saying like, hey, so how can I get this on my own iPad? So uh, that put a smile on our face, definitely. Now, what are some of the things we can pat ourselves on the back for? Um, one of them is um, uh, iBook sustainability. Um, we had the privilege to have our own Apple consultant, Mrs. Sawa Kibwe, who actually helped us, uh, walked us through the process of putting this iBook together and allowed us to achieve three things that we wanted for the iBook, which is simplicity, accessibility, and the chapter recap. And throughout our lesson, all the kids had their own iPad, as you saw, and were able to access the page adequately without any assistance. They'd go back and they'd go forth and ask each other questions and push on the icons, which were saying, like, if first graders can do this, I mean, basically anybody can do that as well. As well. Um, another thing that we really pride ourselves in was collaboration. We all know how hard it is to get two people to agree on things, so can you imagine seven people who are actually are all basically you know, leaders trying to get together and agree on one thing, but we made it work, and that's what heroes do, right? So um, we had, what we did was delegate jobs um, adequately, we used our time efficiently, and the lines of communication were always open. One of the things that we do wish we had um, was more time. If you could imagine we only had one hour, 20 kids, 20 iPads, and five food groups, it was a lot of dense information to uh, present in one hour, which maybe some of you encountered as well in your own interventions, and we just wish we would have given it, you know, more justice to each food group. So that's, that's one of the things we wish for. And then finally, um, a call to action. So where do we go from here? Like you know, there's so many avenues that you can take into te uh, teaching um, any kind of topic. And Team Hero chose to do an iBook, and it was successful. So this iBook has so much potential that we decided that we actually want to go forward, publish the iBook, and um, collaborate with future PA students to take this iBook um, farther than the classroom walls and into the homes of every child.